What's going on? I'm Lizzie the Gifted, and I'm here at the Contra Costa School of Performing Arts, and I'm gonna get to speak to two middle school classes. I love impacting the youth. It's one of my favorite things to do. I cannot wait. Stay tuned. Hey, hey, get that, bet that, jump shot, wet that, post moves, no rules, chef that, no boo. for us, but he's a great person. He went to Las Lomas, um, he then went to Chico State. At Chico State, he was a manager for the basketball team there while he continued to pursue his music um, dreams. He now writes his own music, he produces his own music, and those are a lot of things. He used to just kind of be a rapper. He taught himself, he went and educated himself on how to do all of the components of actually becoming a true artist and being able to help others beyond himself by producing music, etc. Um, his music career continues to grow. It's not where it, he wants it to be, but that's part of the dream, right? That's part of the crime, is being able to put a dream out there and chase it. Um, I think we'll be lucky enough to hear him rap for us today. Yes. He doesn't disappoint me. No, I won't um, ever. Do I ever? And he's, and he's not only a, a great rapper, but his messages are powerful, right? There's meaning behind what he says. Um, it's real. It's not something that's just written down on a piece of paper that doesn't have any meaning to him. I think in anything that you do in life, things that have meaning to you come out when you do those things in front of people, right? So whatever it is that you're passionate about, we talked about trying to chase your passion, find your passion. This man's passion is music and performing and, it, and chasing that dream of ultimately at some point coming where he wants to be as an artist, but um, along the way he's helped a lot of people, he's mentored a lot of people, um, he has a podcast, and I'm sure we'll give you guys the address for that, yeah. he's got a YouTube channel, yeah. um, he's got a lot of content that he puts out on a pretty regular basis that even if you're not into music, there's a lot of valuable messages in it, right? So you can, you can apply that stuff to whatever it is that you are passionate about. Um, <coughs> So I'm not going to continue to talk because that's not why I like it. But we're here. But um, we're in the presence of a, a great man and somebody that I think you guys can learn a lot from. So I would ask for the next hour or so that you guys give your undivided attention, which means you two in the back are going to close that stuff up and your eyes are going to be up here. And really try to digest what it is that, that he says. Learn from him. Listen. Um, He's not that far removed from you guys age-wise. He may share some stories about when he was your age. Um, so again, with, without any more talking for me, I turn it over to Weezy the Gift. Thanks, Mr. Croy. I appreciate it. Don't call me Mr. Croy. Oh, sorry. 
So um, here's what I was thinking. I was thinking I'll give you guys, like I'll spit a quick something for you guys, talk about my origin story a little bit, and then I want you guys just to ask me stuff. Like I just want to have a conversation with you guys. Does that sound good? Cool. Because you guys listen to teachers talk all day, so I thought we can all just talk together. That would be more fun. Okay, well, uh, this little thing that I wrote, it's called The Unspoken Truth. Um, it's kind of like a little rap version of my background story, and I just want to share it with you guys. <clears throat> I was a young boy on the playground hearing that I was brown, wishing that I could be found. I heard a sound. It had a clap and a boom. I moved my feet, bobbed my head, then I was in an empty room by myself, no one else, with no help. That was life. And I wondered why I was white, but I liked what was called black. And I still wonder why white is good and black is bad. Man, that is whack. But I still felt trapped. Because once my eyes opened, I saw a room full of white, but I felt broken. After school, I chose to participate in dance classes at New Style Motherload. I was saved, black accepted white. I was far from life, I was loved. Rejected at private Jewish school cause they thought I wanted to be cool. Life was just so damn confusing, always felt that I was losing. Except when I left, OHDS. If Oakland Hebrew Day School taught me one thing, it was how to stress and that I can never be the best. See, they told us they wanted us to succeed. Taught us how our Jewish forefathers used to bleed why we light eight candles to celebrate the Maccabees, and how Mordecai never followed the royal decree. I'll say it loud, when as of my ethnicity, I say I'm Jewish and I'm proud. So yeah, I've looked in a mirror and I know I'm not black, even though I hoop and I rap, and I used to watch a lot of BET. My mom would never let me watch MTV. But when she wasn't home and I was in the house alone, I would let the images of cars and necklaces fill my dome. Arrived at school dressed like what I saw. I didn't own a belt, I wanted to show my drawers. The teachers would gasp. The kids would all laugh. They didn't understand that the clothes was part of a costume and a mask. But when I got to high school, I discovered the pen and the pad. And ever since, I've seen a glimpse of what I could be. Didn't have to be from the streets to participate in rhythm and poetry. So say what you will about my resume, but hurry it up, because we got some more bread to make. Thanks. <laughs> all right, are you guys cool if I sit down? Yeah. Yeah, I don't want to just stand and talk at you the whole day. I want to like talk with you. Um, so what's up? My name's Lee. You can call me Lee or Leezy, whatever you want. Um, yeah, I mean, Jim kind of said it all. I'm a music producer and a rapper. I started out just writing lyrics when I was 14 years old. Um, then my junior year of high school, or yeah, junior, senior year of high school, I was 17. And I decided I wanted to take music seriously. It's my passion. It's something I really want to do. And I just feel like... Why live your life just trying to chase something that everybody else wants when I do something you want to do? So I just, I said, all right, let's do music. So since I turned 17, 2011, I've been doing music since then. Um, 26, oh yeah, you can come in, it's all good. Not even worry about it. Um, yeah, so like nine years I've been doing music, and then just two years ago I started producing my own music. So playing piano, mixing, mastering, making beats. Um, and I pretty much taught myself. I got mentored by a few people, but I pretty much taught myself. And since then, I've just been putting out music like crazy. Like, you know, like Jim said, I've been putting out a lot of content, got a podcast. Uh, I own a clothing brand called Gifted by Choice. I'm wearing one of our unreleased hoodies right now. Um, I just opened a social media agency, too. Um, so basically, like, I help businesses with their social media. That's just to try and get some extra money um, to fuel the music. So. I mean, that's kind of all I have. I mean, I just kind of want to take questions from you guys. This is a school of performing arts, so I just wanted to hear from you and see if I can just, like, help offer some perspective on, on life. Yeah. What's your name? Samuel. What's up, Samuel? Um, what's your earliest memory of, like, ever that you can remember? Like, it doesn't have to be about rap, but, like, anything. Like, what's your earliest memory? My earliest ever? memory just, like, in life? In life that you can remember ever. <laughs> oh, damn, that's a really good question. You stumped him, Sam. For <laughs> <laughs> my earliest memory of all time, bro, I've never been asked that. <laughs> probably, probably when I was, I think three or four, when I got my dog. Probably, she's she's left us since, but yeah, probably when I was three, I I remember going to Concord to get my dog with just my dad. We didn't tell my mom. And uh, we told my mom after we brought the dog home, you know, like, hey, we got a dog, because we knew she would say no, but so we just got one anyway. That's probably, that's probably my earliest memory, I think, yeah. Okay. That's a super interesting question. Yeah, what's your name? Um, 
Hi, Emily. Um, what does your family think of when you pursue music? That's a really good question. They're pretty supportive. I mean, yeah, honestly, at first, they kind of weren't. I mean, they were like, you know, how are you going to earn money? How are you going to, like, support yourself and whatnot? But um, I didn't use that as, like, an excuse. I just thought, I'm just going to make everybody believe me, you know? And I just, now they're cool, they're supportive of it because they see that it's really something I'm serious about. Uh, and I'm super lucky. I have pretty supportive parents. Um, but I think that a lot of people, like, I, we've all gone through that where people don't believe in what we're trying to actually do. And sometimes I think we, like, try to hide what we actually want to do because we're worried someone's going to make fun of us. Like, oh, that's what you want to do? Like, that's stupid, you know? Like, really people saying that to me, because people have said that to me and other adults have said, that's, you're going to do music, but you need to get an adult job. Like, you need to get a real job. Um, but the fact is that's their insecurities speaking like that's they not everybody wants to be sitting at a desk all day like most people don't want to be sitting at a desk all day like most people want to be doing like what we're all trying to do which is like pursue what we're happy with but they're just too scared right and so when we do that when we're like hey i'm trying to be a rapper or a piano player or a dancer or an artist and i'm happy to do it they they're like exposed like you're exposing their insecurities right out in their face and they hate it so either they're super jealous or they might hate on you or or they might be inspired by you and they might say, oh my God, like that's really cool. I wish I could do that, you know? So my parents, um, they're super supportive. They're both super entrepreneurial, so they kind of get it. Um, but at first they didn't like it and I had to make them believe. I had to put a lot of work in to make them believe, you know, so, yeah. Yeah, what was your name? What like inspired you to make music and like what, um, what like age did you really start thinking that like you want to pursue this? What age did I want to pursue? Well, wait. What's your name, by the way? George. George. Okay, cool. So, what what age did I want to do it, bro? I think the first rap I ever wrote, like I think I was seven years old, actually. I think my mom, mom reminded me of that, and I. Um, it was called like Peace Out or something. It was like about world peace. Like what did I, I was seven years old. So probably then, but obviously didn't pick it up till like later. Um, Do you remember the lyrics? Ah, uh, not really. Come on, man. Like it was like, it was like, it was like peace out brother, peace out sister. If we had peace, the world would be better or some, okay. some, something like that, I don't remember. Uh, but like when I started doing dance classes, so like I went to school in Oakland at a private school but my mom took me to a more like fun part of Oakland where they had dance classes. So that like in middle school in seventh and eighth grade when I was introduced to hip hop culture and like seeing how people talked and dressed and the music and the dancing, that's when I was like, ooh, I love this. Like I love hip hop and I love rap and just dance in general and art. Kind of gave it a break because I was a hooper. So ninth, 10th grade, ninth grade, I wrote some more lyrics. But then 10th and 11th, I was like, I'm going to take a break because I didn't want people to make fun of me. But then I couldn't stay away. So then probably senior year of high school, 17, when I was like, no, this is it. Like, this is really what I'm going to do. So it's kind of been in there my whole life, but um, it's been in and out for a little bit. But then when I was 17, nine years ago, I was like, no, this is it. So, yeah. Yeah. What's your name? Uh, Bella. Hi, Bella. <laughs> um, <laughs> sorry, I'm awkward. <laughs> Um, have you ever? Me too. I'm hello. <laughs> <laughs> have you ever thought of like just <clears throat> stopping, and what made you like realize that you shouldn't stop and you wanted to actually do this, like, like just quitting completely, like, oh no, this is stupid, and then you thought about it some more, and you're like, no, I want to do this. Mm, good question. That's such a good question. <clears throat> um, have I thought about quitting? Yeah, of course. Like music's. It, what we're doing is really hard, like, I don't know, at the expense of, I don't want to say, like, be mean, but, like, just going and clocking in at 9 a.m. and leaving at 5 is, is easy. Like, someone tells you exactly what to do and tells you exactly how much you're paid and, like, sets everything up for you. That's easy. Like, what we're doing is not. Like, what we're all trying to do is, like, we have no instructions, we have no rules, like, nobody's looking over my shoulder. So when stuff goes wrong, which it does all the time, yeah, of course, like, I wanted to quit. Um, then, like, I'm, I have insecurities, so, like, when something goes wrong, I'm like, oh, I suck, I'm stupid. Like, I beat myself up, right, which was we all do, but 
but this is what I signed up for. Um, you know, yeah, I think about quitting all the time. Like with these hoodies, for example, right? I'm like trying to start a clothing brand. Dude, we went through so much BS with these hoodies um, that all fell back on me. Um, you know, um, what else? What else? Like, just I, I go through so many things that make me just want to quit and get that easy nine to five, right? But no, I can't quit because I'd rather do this. And I, 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 I visualize like what my life is going to be like sticking through it. Um, and I've kind of like gotten into the habit of realizing that that everybody that we like really love, like all these musicians and celebrities, they've all been through stuff where they wanted to quit. Like they've all gone through it. Um, and they all started out being really bad at what they wanted to do. You know, every basketball player, what player wasn't good. Like Michael and Kobe weren't good when they started. So they like, but they kept going and like pushed through. So to me, when I go through these situations, like with these hoodies, like the challenges I went through, I'm just like, I get kind of happy. Cause I'm like, oh wait, this is the stuff that all the interviews and the podcasts and YouTube video people talk about. All the stuff where they, they talked about wanting to quit. This, I'm in it right now. So like, yeah, I get kind of mad of course for like a little bit, but mostly I get through it. And then you just gotta figure out how to solve it. Like you just gotta figure out how, like with these hoodies I was supposed to get half from gray, half from black. Okay, well we went through a little mishap and they're all gray which like upset me because we spent money thinking we were getting one thing, but we got the other. But what am I gonna do? I got gray hoodies, am I supposed to quit? Am I supposed to toss the hoodies in the trash? No, the hoodies are still sick. Just gotta figure out a way to solve the problem and not quit, because if you quit, it, it just, I don't know, I just feel like, like the word failure, for example, like failure, you only fail when you stop. Like I messed up with something, but that doesn't mean I failed. If you keep going, you didn't fail, you know? So. Yeah, I've thought about quitting, like I think about it all the time, but I'm never going to. I would, I'd rather die than quit. So, yeah, that's a really good question, yeah. Um, yeah, what's your name? Giselle. What's up, Giselle? How long does it usually take you to write a song? Very good question. <laughs> Different every single time. Sometimes I'll literally start and finish a whole song in one day. Sometimes I'll start a song, maybe write one verse, and I won't touch it for like months. So it just, I don't know, it just completely depends. Um, usually when I get in the zone though, it's pretty quick. You know, I write songs pretty fast, but like I said, sometimes I just let it sit there and I don't go back to it for a while. Yeah. Um, What's up, Samuel? Do you have a logo? And if so, can you try to draw it? I don't really, uh, I don't have a logo. I mean, we have like, oh. um, we have like one for Gifted by Choice. Can I use this marker? I'm horrible at drawing. Yeah. Okay, like, I suck at drawing. It's okay, though. Like, it's really bad. This is going to look like trash. How do I do it? Hey, build yourself up. No, like, this is just going to... It's like it's like a G and a B. And also, you're in an art school. Easy, so it's like something like that. Actually, that's that's actually not... GBC, Gifted by Choice, which is on the back of this hoodie. That's like our logo. It, this is a horrible representation, but... <laughs> nice. Yeah. 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 Um, nice. What else? Any other questions? Yeah, what's your name? Destiny. What's up, Destiny? Cool name. So, what is like your favorite area to go mirror writing? What do you mean? Like, do you have a place in the world where you get inspired the most? Right? Oh, like a physical location? Yeah. Good question. I mean, like I do everything out of the garage right now. So, like. Which is really a studio, though. I mean, yeah, I mean, we turned it's it into not a garage. Right. No, we turned it into a studio. Um, yeah, I pretty much do everything there, but I've written in the car, like driving, I'll pull over randomly and just like, if I'm really feeling a song, I'll pull over and write lyrics. Um, I've written in class a lot, in college for sure. Uh, sorry, being honest, you know. What else? Uh, I've written, I like nature a lot. Like I like writing near the water, like an ocean is cool, lake. Anything where there's water and nature and fresh air, like that's usually, that's a vibe. So, yeah. What's up, what's your name? Ruby. What's up, man? Um, so, people are always telling me that I have to like make connections. Yeah. Like, that's always smart. And I was wondering if like you have any good connections with people. That's a really good question, bro. I mean, okay, like I actually just did a podcast about this, like about networking. I think like, yes, you should do it. If you can meet the right person, you should. Um, but to me, networking means 
like every single person is the, the right person. Um, I'm here with you guys. I mean, you guys don't have music industry connections. That doesn't mean are you less important of a connection to me than a big producer? No, like every human being is a connection. That's the way I look at it. Like everybody is somebody of value to you. And so like, that's why to me, like one of the things I learned was like everybody's a potential person that could help me. So I just treat everybody off the bat with respect. I just try to respect everybody, um, respect myself first and then respect everybody else. So no, honestly, I haven't had a connection. I don't really think I'll ever need one. I mean, maybe, but also dude, like, I don't know who told you that, but like you might be getting advice from someone who's, if they're in the music industry, then you probably take it. But I just sometimes worry that pe we get advice from people who've never done it. I'm not saying that's you, like, I don't know who it was that told you that, but like, we're gonna get advice from people who've never done it. So just make sure, like, don't take advice from people who've not done it. They just wanna try to tell you because they, I don't know why, it's actually kind of annoying. But if they haven't been in the, you know, if you're trying to do music and they haven't been in the industry, don't listen. If, if you're trying to do freaking real estate and they don't own any property, don't listen to them about real estate. Like, people like to try to guess on stuff. So yeah, yeah, you gotta make connections, but at the same time, dude, you can get a lot done on your own. Like, I've gotten so much done by myself just because of the grind and the hustle, like, so, I don't know. Yes and no, you kind of need, you'd, you'd be great to get connections, but you don't need them. Um, What's your name, by the way? Sorry. Yeah. What's going on, too? Uh, do you have, like, a producer? Me. Uh, it's me. I mean, no, I used to, like, have producers, but, like, I just, like, couldn't do it. You know, I can't. Um, it was depending on people. Like, when I had a producer, I had to depend on somebody else to make my beats. I had to wait for some of it, somebody. Um, I had to pay them. So, when you're coming up, bro, you don't have money, and you don't really have a lot of time. You're trying to go. So, like, I was just like, no, I got to just do me, basically, so... Yeah, I produce all my own music. Yeah. But like what Ruby was saying, connections, right? Oh, right. Maybe, maybe for some of you guys. Oh, yeah, I would love to be your guys' connection. Lazy becomes one of your connections, right? I know, and I've seen a lot of you guys do music here at school. I would encourage you to reach out to Lazy. Oh, right? yeah, I would to, love to link with that, like, anybody, yeah. There's no reason your band, right, your group couldn't connect with Lazy and he could help you, right? There's. There's so many ways that people come in contact with each other that ends up playing out in many different ways. Yeah. Um, so for most of you in this room that are passionate about music or whatever it may be, Lizzie may be the connection that makes things change for you. Yeah, right? for sure. Who can inspire you and lead you and maybe produce some of your music and then who knows where it goes, right? Yeah. Um, we're gonna take a quick little break if you're cool with this. Yeah, I'm cool with it. And play one of your videos. Oh, seriously? Yeah. Lizzie the gift. guys like um like I do a lot of stuff like by myself but there's also stuff that I literally can't do so like I can't do all my like I, it's hard for me to do all my YouTube videos and make all my songs and this and that like having Trevor like helps so much and one thing I learned is like I used to surround myself with the wrong people unqualified people who I just you know were just cool with me but they weren't qualified to actually get the job done and so when you guys like go through your creative journeys, don't just pick the people that are close to you. Pick the qualified people. And like, Trevor, luckily, me and him are actually homies, but he's super qualified to do videos. So I, I picked him as a person that I want to be around. So that's just something I was thinking about during the video. Yeah. What's up, what's your name? Avery. Avery, can I move this? Is that up? Just so they can see. Like um, Avery, what's up? Um, so, like, after you film a video, yeah. do you like watching it or does it yeah. make you, like, I know I don't really like watching myself mm. after I do something. Yeah. Um, that's a super good question. I personally do like watching my stuff. Like, I listen to my own songs and, like, podcasts and videos. But I guess I'm different. I don't know. Sometimes. Um, all my old stuff I don't like because I think it's not good. <laughs> but, but don't you think that's part of the journey? Right, like going back and looking at something. That's oh funny. yeah, for sure. Like, yeah. There's power behind that, right? To there see, really is. To see how far you've come, 
Yeah, but it's hella cringy made. sometimes. Like, it's so bad sometimes. Yeah, but I would argue it's good to go back. And That's true. Go, right? Like, yeah. It, it yeah. can give you perspective and, and a real understanding how far you've come. No, I right? agree with you. No, I think so. Yeah, but so I do. I do. Um, yeah, I like watching it. What's going on? Um, this is like not a question about rapping or anything. That's right. Your first one wasn't either. It's all good. What's your favorite video game? I haven't played video games in a long time, but NBA 2K, huh? NBA 2K, okay. or Grand Theft Auto was really cool. Uh, <laughs> like I'm being honest, you should. But I don't, oh, man. I like. Hi. Oh, come on in. This is Grandma Peg. Hi, Grandma, hi, Grandma Peg. Peg. Everybody say hi to Grandma Peg. Hi, Grandma hi, Peg. Hi, Grandma hi, Peg. Anybody else here to see if Sebastian Alvarez? He is not here today. Not here today. Thank you. Hi. You're welcome to stay, Grandma Peg, if you want. It's perfectly all right. I'll go in the hall. Okay. <laughs> Hi, Grandma Peg. Hi, Grandma Peg. Legend. We, cool. just had, we just had two legends in the room at the same time. Dude, I can tell she was. Like, you can feel the energy. But I also got inspired from basketball players to like grew up playing basketball. So like Kobe Bryant, Michael Jordan. Um, I was when I was a kid. I loved Dwayne Wade. It's like basketball players, rappers. Yeah. Mostly just icons and stuff. Yeah. Woods, what up, man? Um, do you ever go to any of our theater productions? Oh, dude, I super would. You gotta let me know, though. Because you're at a well, basketball practice, you never tell me about it. Well, you better give you got, me a little bit more. You gotta give me a little bit more tomorrow. I'm hella down. Up with the ticket and you'll come. Oh, I'll, I'll pay for a ticket, too. I'm super <laughs> down. I'd love to. Olive, what's up? Um, have you ever had a, like, a hater who really made you want to do something? But, like, oh. I had a girl who always told me I couldn't be anything, and yeah. I really just wanted to, like... I know, yeah, I did, I, I did that a lot. <laughs> but, like... It's always tougher than she looks. I know. But, like, um, a person who's made you want to do something more because, you, because they believe you can't do it, and you want to show them you can do it, yeah, hundred percent. Uh, yeah. I mean, when I was in high school and I was first starting to rap, there was definitely people who were um, kind of making fun of me about it, messing with me. But I don't know what what clicked with me that I knew I was gonna just do rap and just do it. And so, yes, hearing them definitely makes me want to do it more. And now, like, I think now people kind of get what I'm trying to do. But now I'm trying to break in to do other stuff. Like I have a social media agency that has nothing to do with music, but I'm super passionate about like business and getting money. So people are definitely hating on that now. Like people are like, why are you doing that? You need to stay focused. You know, you need to just do one thing, but they don't get what I'm trying to do. So why would I listen to them? So yeah, oh, obviously people, people do. Uh, yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. Yeah, what's your name? Malaysia. From your first rap, um, when you said like on the playground and you heard a boom. Yeah. Then... Oh oh oh! I he I heard a clap and a boom. Oh, the boom is like the kick drum, clap and a boom, like just. What did I say? On the playground. Heard a sound. Yeah yeah. So like basically just hearing hip hop music. Like that was to symbolize like sounds I was hearing oh, that I never like, heard before. Yeah. Like the kick drum, like when the song is like banging and then the clap, like. Those sounds of hip hop specifically, like, super, really inspired me and got me fired up. Yeah. Yeah. What's your name? Uh, Ronin. Okay. What is your most popular video and or song? The most popular video and or song? Um, damn, I don't know. My most popular video and or song? Probably... I did a song a while ago called We Over Me, and I like did a music video for it, and I made hoodies. So like I had this whole marketing release around it where like I sold a bunch of hoodies, and I was pushing the music video. I put money into the music video like to get it more views on Facebook and like YouTube and stuff. So I'd probably say that, but um, probably that song. I have another one called Lighting Up that I did a music video for. Uh, and then that one was really popular too, the one we just watched coming through. So I'd probably, probably say those three. That's a good question though. Um, I should probably know that faster. Yeah. Yeah, what's up? Hi, again. Hello again. <laughs> um, uh, have you ever had, I guess, like, someone almost like 
flip you off or something. Like uh, you were working with them for something, and they might have not like believed in you, but they wanted like your money, mm. or um, you were just trying to do something with them and like working with them for something, mm -hmm. but they like just weren't a good like person to work with, or yeah. just like didn't believe in you. Yeah, I probably have more of those stories than I do people I've worked with that are good. You know, I, I have a lot of those. Um, yeah, sure, I can tell you a couple. I mean, one of them, there was no money involved. It was a, it was a producer I was working with locally. Uh, and he, like, wanted a lot of control over the songs because they were his beats. And he was, um, he was super picky about how I sounded on the songs. So it kind of created this weird pressure for me to, like, do something he wanted to do. Which, like, you guys know, like, when you're creating something, you don't want to think about someone else who wants You want to think about what you want. So he would, like, he was, he would critique the songs, but, like, too harsh. Because I, and I knew he wasn't coming from a place of, like, actually caring. He just wanted, like, I don't know. He just wanted to sound good on his beats. So, like, that didn't end up working out. Um, what else? The question was, have I worked with someone and it, like, didn't work out? Yeah, like they just didn't believe in you. I didn't believe or, in. Or like they just didn't they didn't think that you could do it, but they worked with you anyways, mm. like to get something out of you. Um. Yeah, I don't know about like that specifically, but I definitely worked with people and it did not work out. And it was yeah. I mean, maybe they didn't believe in me. I never really asked them. That's, they probably did. That's a great way to look at it. Yeah. I think. Um, like I told you, I've gone through so many catastrophes working with people that then, I've had a few great, like Trevor is somebody I work with that's phenomenal. You know, he's one, and I maybe have two other people out of like 100 that I've worked with that just, you know, people flaked on vert. Oh, actually, you know what, I got one. Ah, now I'm thinking about it. This other producer I was working with offered to do this album for me where he was gonna like make all the beats and like do everything for free. And then he like really like catted on me, like flaked on the whole thing, and he was like, "Oh, I need to take a break from music. I'm going through stuff in life right now," which ended up being total BS because like I'm, I kept hitting him up, like, "Hey man, like it's been two months. Like, is your break over yet? Like, I have this album I'm trying to do." Uh, and he ended up saying, like, honestly, man, I just don't believe in the music you're putting, like you're doing, and I think you're too money hungry. I don't think that you are really in it for the music, which is not true. Uh, and he kind of pushed my whole project back. So I would say that was probably the worst case. That was, yeah, that was pretty bad. Yeah, that's a really good question, yeah. Yeah. Who was the first person that supported you? My friend Evan. My friend Evan Maeda, who is partnered with me with the clothing. He, like, when we were seniors, he's, he asked me, hey, can you make me, like, a little, like, CD of, like, all the popular songs right now? I don't have any music, and I, don't, I can't plug my phone into my car. I need some good songs. So I made him some songs that had, like, random people like Wiz Khalifa, whoever was popular at the time. But I slipped one of my own songs in there, and I was like, ooh, like, let's see if he'll notice. Like, no one knew I rapped. And he, I was listening in the car with him, and he was like, oh, like, track number seven, like, is this you? Like, it sounds like it could be you. And the production was way lower quality than the rest of the songs, so he's like, this probably is you. And I said, yeah, this is me, what do you think? And he's like, dude, you should make a mixtape. Like, you should take music seriously. And literally since then, I never, Look bad. So yeah, definitely my friend Evan. Yeah. yeah. Oh, um, have have you ever gotten like hate and like if you did, like what was your reaction? I've gotten a lot of hate. I've gotten hate on like in person, but I've gotten hate on the internet too. I mean, um, because I've like put money into Facebook advertising, so you're gonna get strangers from all over the world who people are gonna hate. Like people you know are gonna hate. Honestly, like I said earlier a little, like, about how people, like, don't believe in themselves, or maybe they're trying to do something and they're not succeeding and they see you doing it and doing well, they get angry. So, usually, like, my reaction at first, you definitely, I don't take haters very seriously, because people who are trying to do something productive, like all of us, like, successful, successful, successful people, like, don't even think about hating on somebody. You know what I mean? Like somebody who owns tons of businesses or is super popping, <clears throat> or just to have the right mindset, like it doesn't even cross their mind to write a comment. Like what? Like why would I ever 
I would never waste the time to say something on an, on an internet comment like, you suck. Like, it wouldn't even cross my brain. So somebody to take the time to write like a paragraph, like they're a loser. They're a loser. They're like, to me, like that's just like, you are the biggest loser of all time, but I feel bad for you because like you, like, you just have nothing going on. So I just, at first, obviously I'm like, oh, you're a stupid loser. And then I'm like, I kind of come back to like being like more empathy, which means like trying to feel for somebody else. Because they actually like, people who hate are actually in a really bad place and it's actually really sad. So usually I hate them at first, but then I kind of come to my senses and try to be compassionate. You know? And then I, us I usually ignore them, or maybe I'll comment something like, oh, love you so much or something stupid, like just to see if they'll hate me a little more. I don't know. Okay. Um, yeah. Woods, what's up? Um, why do we have all the cameras? Oh, because like I'm trying to get my YouTube channel popping, bro. Like, I gotta bring the cameras as many places as I can go. Oh. And I knew this would be special, so I was like, yo, Trev, we gotta do this. Like, we need content for the YouTube channel. So, are you cool with it? I guess so. Okay, well, if you're not, we can turn them off. Like, I'm cool no, with it. No, I'm fine. Okay, great. Perfect. Is this gonna be on YouTube? Yeah, is that cool? Yeah. Nice. Yeah, yeah this will definitely be on YouTube, yeah. Yep. Oh, my YouTube channel? Oh, let me, before I take your question, let me just write. Can I write on here again? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just lazy to gift it everywhere. Like, you can literally type your favorite platform and I'm here. And also, I, I, I did look you up on Google. You look me up on Google? I'm on Google, right? That means I'm super famous if I'm on Google, right? You're on Google? Do you know Blueface? Uh, no, I don't. Let's no, I'm not start, famous. Start one. I'm not famous now. I don't have Wikipedia. Damn, that's it. I don't have Wikipedia. So whatever, like, SoundCloud, Spotify, Apple Music, YouTube, Instagram, TikTok. I'm on TikTok. Oh, Pandora. You're on TikTok? Hell yeah, I'm on TikTok. Yeah. Hey, hold up. Uh, not Pandora. Hold up. Hold up. Time out. On my own. TikTok. Time out. As we know, phones are not allowed in class. Right now, I'm going to make an exception. Yeah, pull your phones out for sure. Pull out your phone right now. Yeah. Hey, I got an idea. Hey, listen. Add easy the gift. Here, here's what we'll do. Um, so I got these hoodies right now that we haven't announced yet. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna do a little special contest for this class and the next class. So here's are you guys gonna post this video? Oh, are we gonna post it on YouTube? Like, like um, tomorrow or soon? We'll probably post it like Wednesday. Okay. Yeah, probably Wednesday. Okay. I already, After the I already added Can you reason to my story. I'm easy. in the contest. <laughs> Good luck, guys. Right, what's up, right right okay, what's up? I have two questions. Okay. If you want, I can show you around the school if you want. Oh, well, we have to do that. And then, two. After this next class, I have another class I have to speak yeah, I can speak to. No. Uh, uh, this is all my class to speak to. And would you, and would you get a Ford for any kind of sports thing? Whoa, would I get a dream car? I have three dream cars, but one of them's on my phone. So this is one of the cars I wanted to buy for 88. But I also want a Rolls Royce uh, Ghost and a Mercedes um, S550. What grade are you guys in, by the way? Seven. 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 The school goes sixth grade through seniors. In sixth through high school, yep. Well, is anyone here in high school? No. Okay, okay. It's sixth grade and then seventh grade. That's this Wait, class, you're seventh and sixth. No, you're not. Oh. Wait, are, what's the oldest? Seventh? Right yeah. Now? yeah. Okay. And what's the next class going to be? Six and seven. Six and seven. You haven't gone to the other two. Okay. Um, do you guys still have to take math and science and history and all yeah. that? Yeah. All right. Who's in production and design? What's production and design? It's like production and design. Ruby's in, Ruby's in production and design. Oh, I know. No, he's instrumental. Production and design is a oh, place dummy. to like help build sets and like... Drawings. And, like, and they do like the soundboard and all that for production. That's and so and the lights for theater. Lights. That's, that's so safe. That's cool you guys, like you guys go to a pretty dope school. Like you, the fact that you guys put emphasis, I mean, when you're this age, like, I don't know, some people might be like, no, I hate this school. I hate this place. Like I hate school. But like you guys got to like the school you go to is way different than other schools. Like yeah, this is I mean, I don't know. I don't go here and it, and I didn't go here, but I wish I did. It seems pretty cool. You guys all seem like wild and crazy. Like I'm pretty wild and crazy. When I was in school, I was the worst student for ever. Like for the, my whole life, it was hard to find someone who was worse than me. So like I get what like I don't know if all of you are like that. I'm sure there's some good students, but if you're one of the people who just hates being at school, like I, nobody feels you more than me. So like 
Um, I just wish I could have, if, A, it's like if I hate school, it would have been cool to be here though, because it just seems like creative, and like there's two pianos when I walked in, like I played one of them, like it's just sick that you guys got pianos here, like that's, anybody play piano or an instrument, like, Piano. 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 I play the trombone. Trombone. Twinkle, twinkle. That's a sick song. I'm learning to play the trumpet now. Trumpet. Like, that's dope that you guys get to play. I'm learning the Dr. Dre thing. On the piano? Yeah, man. Right. Oh, that's dope. Very popular on TikTok, that, that how that slows up and you know what I'm talking about. Oh, you know when you have to, like, link them? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yes. You should act like one of the kids. But yeah, I do that. Like, like you, you can sit down and pretend you're a kid. Oh, like school. just go to a class and just sit down. No, like but in this class you can sit down and miss your place to teach you. Oh, like when the next class walks in. Oh, that actually is pretty funny. I'm down. And like you could be like, hey, this kid's visiting for the day. He's held back like 20 years. <laughs> Yeah, what's up, bro? Uh, so, like, first of all, when you said you're the uh, worst student at your school, um, let's introduce ourselves. Uh, <laughs> but actually, though, like, um, yeah, this school is a lot different from the other school I went to. Uh, I'm not gonna say his name because, you know. Okay, so, okay. Well, but you didn't like it. Protect the. Don't want them to find me. <laughs> <laughs> I will find you anyways, wanted it because it's so just bad. really bad, yeah. like, because, um, multiple times I've seen, like, kids just, they didn't look very depressed, and, like, mm -hmm. I saw multiple students, like, vaping in the middle of class, and the mm -hmm. teacher's not caring, and it's like, I overheard conversations, and kids were like, I'm planning on killing myself, and blah, blah, blah. And, like, people there were literally <coughs> depressed. Right. But when I come here, people can, like, talk freely, and, like, no, so far this year, which I'm glad I haven't seen anybody, like, doing any drugs or doing anything bad or get into any fights at all. Oh, Jesus, <laughs> at all. Uh, that was uh, kind of the norm. That's dope that you, that you did that. Hey guys, hey, I don't mind you talking, but one person at a time and Lizzie's gonna call on you, right? Don't just speak out and over overtake them, okay? Well, one thing, like, I want to really respond to that, like, it's super important to like make sure that you have the right environment around you and like a lot of people use their environment as an excuse for why they can't or why they don't do something and I think it's really amazing that you were like hey I need to get out of here like this isn't right for me because a lot of people are like I was about to say our age but a lot of people your guys age like when I was your age you fall like you fall to uh, peer pressure you know um, you, sometimes kids see other kids vaping so they want to try vaping our kids like see people smoking weed so they want to smoke weed so it's cool that you're able to change your environment. Um, yeah, it's really important to do that. It's good that you did that. Yeah. What's going on? Me? Okay, me? Oh, no, right here. Then we're going to go bam, bam, and then we're going to do right after that. Okay, go ahead. Um, I used to go to the same school as you did. Oh, okay. Um, I am gay, and they would call me names. Mm -hmm. They were very, they were supportive, but there were a lot of people who weren't. Mm -hmm. Uh, and they weren't nice about it, mm -hmm. but here I am glad that they're very supportive. A lot of people here are gay or trans or LGBT, and the people who don't like agree with it, they're not like mean about it. It's like I, su I respect your opinion. You respect my opinion. Okay, we're cool. Right. Yeah, I think it's weird when people like just don't let people just do what they want to do. Like I don't understand. I still don't get why. Like. It's just weird that they we have this like this weird hate in the world for what someone else is doing. It doesn't even involve us. Like I feel like everybody should just be able to do whatever. You know what I mean? Like I think that's great um, that we have an environment like this school that allows people to be open like that. That's dope. That that's really cool. And so the old school you were at, it wasn't a good environment. Yeah, that's dope that you changed it too. And what what grade are you guys both in? Both seven. Both seven. A lot of it seven. A lot of it seven. Okay. Fair. <laughs> There's two. There's okay. Three. All right. Yes. Me? Yes. Okay. One. What is your sign? My sign, Scorpio. Ooh, me too. Oh, for real? Okay. What day's your birthday? November twentieth. That's three days before mine. That's. <laughs> wait, three days before wait, wait, yours. Wait, wait, three days after mine. Yeah. Okay. Because if it was out, yeah. Okay. That's one day after mine. Yeah. So yours the nineteenth. Yeah. And yours the seventh. Seventeenth. Very cool. 
Bet. Any other Scorpios? Oh, I'm not a Scorpio, but my birthday is a weird birthday. Okay. Okay. Cool. Hey, 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 we got, we got one right here. Yeah. yeah. Oh, so, uh, what's your favorite color? Red. Red. Okay. Yeah. Everything, but I feel like the most negative thing about this school was that um, before I came here, when I was in fifth grade, and I found out that I was going here, I told my friends, and some of them weren't really good friends. They were all like they talked behind your back, and they were really mean. But so basically, I had a lot of people tell me that. Like, and especially this one girl, Brooke, who I thought was my friend, she told me, um, oh, you're going to Coco Spa, that's, that's funny for you. Uh, I mean, it is a school for stupid people, like, it's funny you're going there, like, it's ironic. I mean, you should have gone there um, all along. And she was just really mean about it, and I thought she was like, right <coughs> A lot of, and then, <laughs> yeah, and so, but, <laughs> um, but basically people were just really negative about the idea of, like, not just a normal school, I guess, mm -hmm. and, like, a performing arts school, and they were saying how the academics were so bad and you're going to fail, and, like, people were just really mean, and then I also know some people who went there and, um, who, or like transferred or something um but so basically people there um they would say stuff like oh if you're going to spa don't talk to bella she's so annoying she's so um like she's she always tried to be cool or something when i was just being myself yeah. and basically everyone was just really negative about the fact that like i was going there and then I also, I had this friend, um, when I was in sixth grade, I was talking to my friend who went to Foothill, which was the school I was going to go to, and I told them that I was bisexual, and that's like, that I had found that out, and I told them, like, trusting them, trusting them to keep it a secret, I guess, because mm. I wasn't ready to tell everyone, and they spread it around the whole school, their whole school, mm. and basically I had people who were like, who I used to know, and they would like DM me on Instagram or they would text me or something, and they would be like, Hey, you're bisexual, that's so weird. Like, why can't you just be normal or right. stuff like that? And they were just like, So bad people, yeah. Uh, so, can I, I like can I interrupt you? So, I think that goes back a lot to what Lindsay was saying. Everyone we were talking about, you were, someone asked about like people hating on, yeah, you, right. Yeah. And I think at your age, and especially in today's world, right, where it's so easy to contact people, whether it be through texting or social media, the people that take the time to ding people or to make comments, in the end, those are the people that are hurting. Those are the people that don't feel secure with themselves. Yeah. Right? So it's, it's, it's always easy to throw stones. Yeah. Right? It's very easy to throw stones. I'm sorry you had to deal with that, right? As I'm sure a lot of you guys have had to, to deal with stuff like that. But the power that you have, right, to just distance yourself from it, right? Yeah or to be strong enough to just squash it and move forward, right? A lot of people would come back and try to fight it and fight it and fight it and come back and it just leads to a worse situation. To be able to just distance yourself from it, be above it, is a real tribute to you, right? To understand yeah. that I, I don't need these people, right? Yeah. And, and those are the people that later in life are gonna make excuses that aren't going to chase their dreams. They're, they're going to try to be comfortable. Yes. Right? What you're doing isn't easy. And you should be proud that you took your path and that you can stand up to those people and say, I don't need you in my life. I don't need negative energy in my life. Right? There's a lot of people today, especially in your age, that just want to bring negative energy. Get away from it, rise above it. Right? So I applaud you, I applaud you for having the right attitude, right? And, and being strong. Right? That's incredible that um, you guys are just, it, it just seems like people are like so open with, you, you guys are just open with who you are. Like when I was in middle school, people, it just wasn't like that. I don't know if times have changed or if it's this specific school. I feel like it's just this specific school. But uh, 
just the fact that you guys are around, because you guys, it's cool, like, when you go out to the real world, every the people are different. Like, everybody's a different person. Everybody has different stuff going on. But the sucky thing is, like, sometimes people try to, like, seem the same. Like, it's like, just because it's easier. It's easier you and me are just the same. No, no, we both just want the same stuff. Like, let's not rock the boat. Like, but that's not how it really is. Like, really, people are really different. And I think one thing for me that's really helped me was learning that, like, not just assuming that everybody wants the same thing as me, um, really has helped me connect with people a lot more. So that's dope that you're able to, like, be here and be strong and, like, be like, no, screw these people. I don't, I don't need yeah. them. So that's dope. That's really cool. I love that. I love that. That's good. That's good. Yeah. All of what up? Um. I, I, I just think that this school's really good because back to the girl who was mean to me, all through my elementary school, this girl, I'm not going to say her name, That's good. she was really mean to me. And I couldn't handle that, so I was kind of mean to her because she was really pissing me off and didn't leave me alone. <laughs> and, and, then, and then I realized that, okay, so... My mom told me that she was going to Foothill, right? Okay. And then she decided to go to this school, and I was like, I cried for a day because wow. I was so sad she was coming here. Cause she, I thought she was going to make my life miserable. Mm -hmm. And then when I got here on the first day of school, she was nice to me, and I'm just like, yeah. in my brain, why is she being nice to me after she's done terrible things to me? Right. And yesterday at lunch, I was, we were, I, my friends sit with her too because, you know, I'm trying to be nice to everybody. Right. She was being mean to me because I'm me. Like, I dress weird and she thinks that's bad. Right. And I don't appreciate that. I don't either. And that's why my friends don't do anything about it. And they, and she hurts them too. Hmm. That's because they ain't your day ones. Yeah. Buy or die. And yeah. she just doesn't, uh, isn't very nice to me, and I, I, I feel that I should be able to do what I want, and you she should. should be able to tell me what to do. You, you are able to do anything you want, but I, I completely understand where you're coming you from. Like, friends. when I was, yeah. what, so when seven, so like sixth, seventh, eighth grade, like when I started getting into dance, so this is an interesting part of the story, like when I was getting into dance, I went to a private Jewish school. So everybody was white and Jewish, and nobody listened to rap, nobody listened to hip hop. Um, so when I would go to dance class, I was the only white kid there, and I was accepted. Like there was no, there was no skin color. Like everybody was just dancing. So it was dope to find that unity. But when I went back to school, like you know, I'd go to dance classes after school, and I liked the way people dressed. Like back then, people would wear like rock aware and fubu, and what else were people? What? Bell bottoms. Ah, yeah, like stuff like, anyway, people were dressing cool at the hip hop studio I went to. So I wanted to dress like them because that's what I thought was cool. But at school, right, everybody was thinking I was weird because I was sagging my pants and wearing big shirts. Back, back then it was like wearing bigger shirts was cool. Now the style's different, but back then it was like, Big shoes, like basketball shoes, sagging my pants when I was in like seventh grade. So people made fun of me all the time, and teachers even made fun of me, like te which was which made stuff a lot harder. You know, teachers like M Mr. Corey or Jim, he's a really cool dude, but I didn't always have cool teachers like that. Sometimes my teachers would rag on me and say, "Why do you act black? Why are you acting like you're gangster?" Like by the way, associating black with gangster, like let's start there. That's already a problem, but. But that's a separate issue, but like the teachers would just get on me for that and kids would get on me for that. And it made me who I am today. Like it made me strong. Like now I look back and the people making fun of me, they have their jobs and they have their little pension and their whatever, but they're not happy like I'm happy. So when you like finally figure out that way to get around all that, like you're going to be happier because you grew up taking that. Same with everybody else like anybody who's taken the negative energy from others you're going to grow up stronger and all the people who gave that negative energy i'm telling you i've seen it they're going to grow up not great you know um so maybe like four or five weeks ago i came to the school mm -hmm. and i went to foothill okay but so there was this boy shane Who and are these names? Keep going. Um, we'll cut it out he was like not very nice mm -hmm. and he was just bullying people, and I thought that he was my friend, mm -hmm. but 
Yeah. Yeah, I don't I don't bullying is really obviously super negative, but to me bullying comes from like at home, like what's going on. So as much as you probably don't like that guy, that person, I know it's hard, but like try to think about how you can have compassion and empathy for him. He's probably not doing great at home. I mean, maybe his parents aren't supportive or maybe his parents aren't doing well with their marriage or maybe they're like kind of verbally abusive to him and so like he's taking his energy out on you. So as hard as it is, you probably want to just slap him across the face. He's probably not doing so super well at home. So I know. I know it sucks, but maybe try to think about that. It'll help you with yourself too. Like, because if you just hold on to hating him, that's not gonna help you. Like you holding on to that negative energy is like it doesn't help it doesn't hurt him and it doesn't help you. So it's better to try your best to just let all that stuff go. Yeah. I don't think you asked a question at all. What's yeah. your name? Athena. What's up, Athena? Yeah, um, I remember during my school, not many people were nice really. And I honestly could not blame them because we all lived in the same neighborhood and I knew everything that was going on with them and I never really was, I never really held it against them when they were mean to me. Like I understood they probably weren't going through some, some like greatest times. And I remember in elementary school, every time I got bullied, I would actually, my school was very like, they weren't exactly against bullying, but they didn't allow it. But they wouldn't do anything if someone was bullied for some reason. Mm -hmm. And I remember one time, this one boy, he loved to like pull my hair and stuff. And I used to have long hair. And then that was one of the reasons why I actually cut my hair. Cause, and I've been mm -hmm. keeping it short ever since. Mm -hmm. See, he liked pulling on my hair. And whenever I told a teacher about it, they'd say, well, no, is there any witnesses? Did anyone see it? If not, then we can't really do anything. Oh, great. Yeah, so one day, uh, my mom, she signed me up to go into some judo classes oh. and kickboxing and all these other things. And what happened was, he tried to do that again, and I remember what I did was I flipped him uh -huh. over my shoulders, <laughs> and if I, it's kind of surprising that I didn't break his back because he was this close to cement. Right. He landed on the grass, luckily. That. But for some reason, I was the one who got in trouble. Right. And my mom, she was like really mad and she said how, she said how I was defending myself. Yeah. And they said, well, he got hurt and she wasn't. So how is that defending yourself? And I'm like, are you smoking on macadamia? I know, yeah. So oh, you smoking macadamia? There's this one girl named Yoslin who she loved to bully me all the time. And she actually lived next to me. And I remember... She had very harsh ways of bullying because at school, like normal bullying is like calling names or picking on me, but like she wouldn't let me get into my house. She'd just pull out a broom and start hitting me with it for some reason. <laughs> like, what the heck? What? Like, I'd walk home, I'd go up my stairs, and there she'd be with a broomstick. And I'm like, well, I guess I'm going the other way. Right. But now that I go here, yeah. one of my friends. One of my friends that I've known for a long time went to the same school as her for a bit. And I recently asked her, hey, what was it like over there? And she said how the girl has actually fallen into depression. Mm. And I'm like, honestly not surprised. Right. And then I realized something. Wait, I was the only person she bullied. Mm. And I knew she wasn't feeling well for a while. And I would try to reach out to her, but I knew she would never accept it. But now I just realized I was her coping mechanism. Yeah, probably. Right? And that makes me feel kind of happy. Like, okay, I guess I kept her away from doing worse things. Right. Well, see, that's a perfect proof of when somebody's doing something bad to you, it's like they have just their own stuff going on. Mm -hmm. So, it's yeah, like, well, I appreciate you for sharing. At least she wasn't doing anything worse than that. Yeah. What's up, you guys? So I wanted to touch on something. I know I'm just a video guy and I'm recording. Oh, yeah. I just noticed something. I think that really goes to show how, like, really open and just, yeah, just how open and what you guys will be able to do, you know, whatever you want to be and whatever you want to do. Because literally the exact proof is happening right now in this classroom. You guys, and I think any other school, wouldn't, you, you wouldn't have the confidence to sit here in front of the class and in front of cameras and in front of some, some people that you don't know and say all these things that you, know, you would normally keep to yourself. And you know, it's, it's like much harder for a lot of other kids at a lot of other schools to speak about. So I think that just goes to show 
you know, I know I did I did acting for a really long time, like ten years. I was in theater, um, and I'm really like I just want you guys to know this is this is a really awesome, really cool, and you guys are really lucky for to have this school, this experience, and it just goes to show with how you know, open you guys are able to be. So just yeah, just always think about that. Just because I love you. Yeah. How are we on time? Man? About seven minutes on the next class. Um, <coughs> can I ask you another question? So you had, yeah. you had talked about school wasn't always your your thing, right? right? You, yeah. you didn't always have passion to maybe do your best, or you struggled with teachers or classes yeah. or just being motivated. Yeah. What kept you going in terms of understanding the importance of finishing school and yeah. going to college and, and getting all that done? When there was all these other things that were motivating you outside of school. Yeah. Um, what motivated me to finish school? Um, and to go to college, right? It would be easy. Yeah. For some, it'd be easy for someone who doesn't feel like well, school is the right place for them to finish high school and be like, I'm good. Yeah. Um, <coughs> honestly, I, th I think it was because like I didn't uh, when I graduated, like I knew I wanted to do music, but I didn't know exactly how I was going to do it. So I went to college because I, I get at the time I wanted to have. I wanted to have that something to fall back on. Um, and I also wanted to be, I think being in school is cool because you can socialize with people. And, but if you fail and you get kicked out of school, you don't get to socialize with people and you don't get to make connections and make friends. Um, it's so crazy. Like when I was your guys' age, like I hated being in school. And right this second, like I wish I was in school right now. Like I miss it. Like I miss like getting to school and saying hi to whoever my friends were. and. I don't know, like it's so weird. Like I haven't felt it since I finished. Now I want to like full circle. Yeah, like I want to be in seventh grade again. Like it's so sick. So, but uh, yeah. So I think I also just wanted to have the accomplishment of saying I finished something um, because I believe in. I don't know. I believe in starting some, finishing something that you start. My dad always taught me any boy can start something, but it takes a man to finish. So I just wanted to finish. I don't know. I just have this idea of completion that's super important to me. I also think it's cool the fact that I was even, like it's a miracle that I got a college degree. I was such a bad student. So the fact that I actually have a degree, it's like, wow, I can't believe this guy got a degree. So, and I feel proud the fact that I just was able to, to do it. Um, yeah, so I think that was it, the sense of completion and wanting to just finish something. And I like being around people, so I wanted to be around more people. Yeah. Are you good, by the way? Do you have to go? No, I'm good. If the class is about to end, then yeah, I'm good. Okay, solid. Um, we keep going. We got a couple more minutes. Um, Take a couple more questions, then we'll do a, a bunch of pictures. That's something yeah. about you guys. For, for you know. Yeah. Content. Okay. Yeah. Two more questions. Yeah. If you have not. Okay. We're good. Yeah. You have asked them. What's your name? Eliana. What's up, Eliana? Um, you've been talking about your passion for dance. Can you dance for us? I, I suck at dancing. I won't. <laughs> <laughs> I'll do a, I'll dance with so, like do if we walk? do a TikTok and we do yeah. something and you guys show me I'll do one but I can't like bust I can't I can't do it anymore oh like I can't do it like I used to be it. <laughs> but if you guys are down we'll do a TikTok I mean and we can yeah. okay, last question last question then we're doing a TikTok and then we're taking pics <laughs> bro why not TikTok <laughs> This is, um, this is speaking for all the people who work with you. I don't like you. you. Yeah. The people who talk the most in a fight usually are the smartest. So the people who talk a lot My mom can't explain college. it until they keep coming up with reasons and excuses. Right. So the people who talk the most in a fight or arguing usually don't know much about that stuff. Area, subject, or what you're fighting about. Yes. No, I totally agree. Right. Usually, the loudest in the room is the weakest. You want to try to hey. be. Hey. Well, don't, well I, I'm the loudest in the room usually. Like, call out but yeah. But so that's a real point, though, right? There's a, there is power. There's power. There is power in understanding time, place, and moment, right? All of us want to hear your voices, yeah. right? Obviously, Lizzie could have come in here and just talked the whole time, but what did he do? He Ask talked questions. to us. He, yeah. he wanted to hear from you guys, right? And then try to shed some light or give you guys insight, which is powerful. Yeah. But that comment that he just said, I think can be very applicable to, to us, right? Sometimes 
seeking attention is we need something. There's better ways to do it than trying to be the loudest or to call out on somebody else, right? Like, I think Lisa's been a great example today of trying to connect to somebody that you don't know, mm. right? And to have someone just to listen to you. If you ever need that, right, there are staff here, teachers, there's your friends. There's a lot of people that are willing to listen. So if, if you are hurting and you feel like you need to find attention in, in ways that maybe aren't the right way, know that there are people that are willing and want to help you. Right. And that are there for you will listen. And I think honestly, like to that point, like when I was younger, like I was the loudest person in the room. But it was because I felt like I needed I needed I don't know, like I felt like I needed people to notice, but now I've started to realize it's so much better to listen than to talk. I mean I'm talking like right this second, but like I just read a book called How to Win Friends and Influence People by Dale Carnegie. Um and one of the chapters is how to be a good conversationalist, which means like how to talk back and forth with someone. And the whole chapter was about not talking, which was weird. It's like just keep asking questions. Like whenever you're having a conversation with someone, just ask them a question and just shut your mouth and be quiet. They're going to talk like 90% of the conversation. And then at the end, they're going to say to you, oh, you're such a good conversationalist. But you, you didn't talk. Like I have a lunch today with um, somebody who's an entrepreneur who I'm like super excited oh, no. to have lunch with. I'm like, I hope I barely talk. Like, I just want to literally ask him stuff and just shut my mouth. Like, because he's been able to build a business from zero to really successful, and he has a family. And I just want to know, like, how do you do it? You know what I mean? Same thing with you guys. Like, I just want to hear from you guys and try to talk as little as I could. So, yeah. All right. So, so, and somebody, but oh, go ahead, real quick. No, you go. Real quick, clap it up for Lizzie. No, no, thank you. Clap it up for you. That is a real tribute to you guys. And to you, no. uh, right? That you no, can control you. the room and no, your thank message. You. Shout out to Contra Costa School of the Arts, Coco Spa here in Walnut Creek, California. Thank you guys so much for having me. Hey, if you haven't already, subscribe down below to the channel. Hit the bell notification. We come in strong every single week. Gifted by Choice Movement. You know what it is, baby. Yeah.